What's up everyone, this is Matt Morozik and this will be the second work in progress on the spawning pool Venom. So I actually did a lot of work on him yesterday and I didn't record any of it because it's just a bear to handle. He's just so massive. So what I did yesterday is I um, continued working on, <clears throat> excuse me, getting the legs asphyxiated. I got the arms uh, asphyxiated, got the head on, got the jaw put together. Um, put the tongue in with a magnet uh, as a really good recommendation by my friend uh, Randy Van Dyke so you take the tongue out there's a magnet <clears throat> up in there you can see what I did so you can see up in here I what I did is I, I added a magnet to the tongue and then this is before I put the head all together I put the tongue on there and I sculpted some aids around the tongue so it was a smooth transition. So now when that's painted, you shouldn't be able to notice that this, the tongue can come out. It should be a really nice smooth transition. So, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm still getting over whatever I have, a cold. So, um, yeah, yesterday was really busy. I got a lot done. Um, a couple things popped up that I have to fix now that it's all together. And the main, that main uh, thing is that the, now that he's all together and lined up pretty well, he doesn't key into the base as well as I would like. So what I'm going to do today, the last thing I did yesterday was that, um, of course my phone rings as soon as I start recording. Um, so the, the last thing um, I did yesterday was I epoxied the, uh, the hands on the arms and you can see there's a nice gap right there. And I got the same thing over here. So today I'm going to fill those with A's. I'm going to blend those in. And I'm going to rekey uh, one of the feet. This first, the foot in front fits pretty good. Now again, this is a garage kit. So this is a traditional sculpt. <laughs> I'm going to leave this one alone. But over here, there's a pretty good gap around everything. So I'm going to uh, rekey this back foot. And he's actually got part of the base sculpted on, onto the foot here. So... Um, it's a relatively simple thing to do with Bondo. I've shown it before, but uh, now that he's all together, you know, I got the 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 legs are epoxied, and each leg has four screws going up into the crotch, so I don't think those are going to come apart. The head I pinned with a um, oh, a five thirty second inch brass rod, epoxied it on there, used A's and smoothed it out. Now I'm sure once I get the first round of primer on here, a bunch of stuff is going to pop out as far as like things I've got to fix. But um, so today's goal is to get the wrist filled with A's and kind of blended, get this key, this lap, this back uh, uh, foot re-keyed so that it fits better, less gaps. And then the worst joint so far that I've had on this piece is right here on this butt. Um, there's actually a pretty good step. So you can see here I've got that filled in with A's. Um, I'll probably have to go back there and do another little round of filler. And in doing so, when I sanded it, I sanded a bunch of the, the skin kind of wrinkles out. So once I got that shaped the way I want, I'll go back in with a Dremel and I'll just kind of recreate some of this texture in the skin. But it, everything looks like it's, it's fitting pretty well. Um, painting this is going to be a, a real bear. This is kind of like when I did the Mad X Hulk. I'm not sure if any of you guys watched me do the Mad X Hulk, but now he's one piece. Um, it's really hard to handle. It's just massive. He weighs a ton and it's just awkward. So painting is going to be interesting um, just because the logistics of moving them around. So I actually need to return a phone call real quick. I just got, I'm going to uh, come back and we'll work on putting A's around the, the wrists. And again, I've got these, I used the um, the keys that were on the wrist. In some spots, they li it lines up pretty good. Other areas, it doesn't line up good. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to just, I don't know, I have to fill it in, kind of re-sculpt it, get that all blended in, and um, we'll go from there. Now, I have noticed, I did buy some new aids um, from Amazon, and I got the small kit. So this is a, a one-pound kit, which means you get uh, eight ounces of each color. My old set is a four-pound kit kit which still works but the difference is and I thought that maybe I didn't mix it well enough that the new Aves is super butter it's like really smooth and creamy it's easy to work with but it takes um, and it takes you know really 
Um, <clears throat> according to this, it takes uh, one to two hours. You can easily work with it, two to three hours. It starts to set up, and you can form detail and then uh, completely cured in 24 hours. The main difference between the new stuff and the old stuff is the new stuff. I only have about an hour and a half to work with this, and then it's you can't work with it. It kicks off way quicker, probably because as I open this up and air gets into the container, it dries it out. So depending on what I'm doing, I still use the old stuff. If I, if I know I want to try to get to, to set up a little bit faster, if I don't need that working time, or if I need more working time, I'll use the new stuff. So I'm still going to use the old stuff um, in certain areas. I'll probably use that on the wrists um, here in a second. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, it's just, you know, I, after I did the A's yesterday, I let it all set up for most of the day. And I went in and lightly sanded the, the joints with some uh, 180 grit, then some 240 to smooth them out, kind of get everything to blend. And again, until I get primer on this, I really won't see how good this all looks. Um, so yeah, I'll probably have to go back in and do some more kind of re-sculpting of some of the skin texture. In here, there wasn't any detail in the sculpt at all. Um, so I may go back and recreate some just on that joint up here. I kind of already did that with the A's and my sculpting tools um, Yeah, so that's where we are. So today blend the wrists get this feet this uh, Foot rekeyed. I may do that first because that's easy. That's probably easier than this and then uh, we'll go from there Okay, so let's get this um, this rekeyed a little bit here so again this guy's are really big so we got to really excuse any really more crappy uh camera work than usual it's just it's just so hard to, to handle um i need to do one thing real quick i'm using up an old box here for mixing a bondo on So what we're going to do, let me take him off of the base. Like I said, this foot fits pretty good. This one doesn't fit nearly as bad because once you get everything lined up on the waist and everything, when I had him, let me back up, when I had him on the base without anything pinned or epoxyed, I could get the feet to fit really well in the base, but then I had really big gaps in the hips. So I got the one leg really on really nice the gap is fairly small you can see right there it's only about oh an eighth of an inch maybe a sixteenth of an inch wide so that's really good this leg over here I had much more of a gap because once you get one fit the way you want it then you have to get the second one to line up as best as possible that's the trick with these big garage kits is that you know they sculpt them traditionally and then the, the caster has to cut them apart to mold and cast them so in that process, things shift and they don't line back up exactly like they did um, originally when it was originally sculpted. So it's similar with a 3D print, but a 3D sculpted piece, they still have to cut the pieces and stuff. But a lot of times they can print the piece, they print the sculpt in the pieces the way it's going to be keyed together, if that makes sense. Like the sculpt, the caster does not have to cut the sculpt apart, it's cut apart digitally and then printed. So, you know, the more times you have a human hands on something, little things are going to start not being aligned. So it's just the nature of the beast. So I'm going to take the tongue out so I don't break it. I'm going to take him off the base. Not drop him. He's big. He's not as heavy as the Mad X Hulk was. That guy was solid. Um, so the first thing I did is I took and I scuffed up the inside of this key with some 80 grit sandpaper and then I vacuumed it out to get the dust out. That'll give the Bondo something uh, nice to stick to. I need my Vaseline right here and I'm out of paper towels upstairs. I wish I had some paper towels. Can you go down the stairs? Huh? Do I I've got one right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Vaseline on my paper towel here. Actually, get a new, I need a new container of this. So I'm running out. You can see there's ketchups in there from this. So I'm going to put some of that on my paper towel. And then have to spin the camera around here. Hope you guys can see what I'm doing. And I don't want to break any fingernails or anything. And I'm going to coat this foot in Vaseline. 
This will keep the Bondo from sticking to the sculpt. And I put quite a bit on there. Sorry, let me see if I can show you what I'm doing here. So I got Vaseline on this paper towel and we're giving this a really good coat. And I don't care if there's a ton on here because this is all going to get washed off any other way when I go give this guy a bath later. So I'm getting it up on the edges, on the bottom, anywhere um, the Bono can ooze out and get on this, on this sculpt. Now, he does have a lot of mold release on it. I can feel the mold release. He's um, so that'll help also in the sticking. But you want to do this first before you part, put the Bondo in the key because you don't want to have the Bondo setting up while you're messing with putting the Vaseline on, on this. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now I gotta come down again. Oh. Alright, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to mix up some Bondo and I'm going to mix it up so where it doesn't cure so fast. I want to give myself plenty of time to get things situated on the base. I actually cleaned up my workbench last night a little bit. It was a complete wreck after all the drilling, sanding, and everything yesterday. So I'll get this. I'm good. Spreader. Okay, so I'm just using the Bondo. Again, I said this before, Bondo is simply a brand name. It's not, it's body filler. Bondo is just a brand name. You can get this at Walmart, you can get it at Auto Supply Store. Again, it doesn't have to be the Bondo brand, it's just... And I always mix it more than I need because I don't want to be in the middle of this and like realize crap, I need more. So, I've got a little bit of waste, but nothing too bad. I think that should do it. Okay, and then um, need the hardener, and the hardener comes in different colors. It doesn't matter which color you use. I happen to have blue right now, but they all do the same thing. Um, it kind of does matter on the color of the body filler because sometimes you can get filler in in a blue color, a yellow color. So you want to make sure whatever hardener you're using, you can tell how it's mixed up with with the filler. Like I wouldn't use a blue hardener on a blue body filler. Because you won't be able to see how well it's mixed up. So let's mix this up. Again, this bond is a little. I've had it for a while, so the more times you open the can and get stuff out, it traps air in the can and it dries out a little bit. It still works, it's just not as creamy consistency oh another thing I want to do crap before yeah I just screwed up so what I want to do another thing I'm going to take some of this Vaseline I'm going to put on the outside edges of this key real lightly just on the outside so we get it use out, it's easy to clean up. And do a light coat. Okay. You want to mix this up so it's a consistent color.
Now we want this to fill in around the edges. <clears throat> First, then we're going to push him down. Just like that. So the front looks pretty good. You can see, the, hopefully, you can see the ooze out there. Kind of oozing out around the edges. So I'm going to hold this like this for a little while and then I'll come back. Okay, so this is sat for a few minutes and you know it's time to take the piece out when the filler starts to set up. It's kind of got a rubbery consistency right now. I'd say maybe the consistency of dried silicone. Um, so you don't want to let it cure completely. Um, you want to take it out before it's had a chance to dry all the way. What I can do while I'm waiting for this to kind of set up a little more, I can come here with an X-Acto blade and clean up some of this ooze out a little bit and really get a, a clean edge. And I can cl clean it up a little bit more too with sandpaper, but I can get the excess off right now while it's still soft. And there might be still a, still a small gap, but it's going to be a much better than what, what, what it was. All right, let's see if I can, let's see if I can take them out. There we go. There's our new key. So you can see here where the filler filled in. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and try to trim off some of this excess. While it's still pliable. And then what I'll do is I'm just gonna get the, the most, the majority of it off with this and then I'm gonna go in with the Dremel and a bit and really clean it up a little bit. I'll probably put the put them back on the base and the one spot I saw that I didn't get as much use out as I would have liked to is by the front of the toe. So I may um, just do a little bit of A's in that spot. But the great thing about this base is it's got this kind of rock texture with the skull so it doesn't have to be super super clean because it'll just blend in with the rest of the base yeah but it filled in quite a bit right here it's about a quarter of an inch of filler right in this spot that's where I've had the biggest gap when I when I epoxied the legs on, they splayed out a little bit. They weren't um, towed in as much as they, they were originally before I kind of started pinning and gluing things together. So they went a little bit toe out. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna let this dry. <sighs> let this get really nice and hard, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I let that harden up, but I sanded it down a little bit, trimmed it up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more right here underneath the toe uh, to get that to blend in a little bit better. And I think I might go ahead and do the same thing on this other foot too, just so it's consistent. So I'm gonna fill in right here, the same thing. I'll put some Vaseline on the foot. Uh, again, just cause it kind of comes off when you do this. 
I'm going to fill in just right there, put it back on, let that harden, and then we repeat the same process I did on this foot, on this foot, and then we should have two good new, two, <laughs> two new good keys if I can spit it out. So when I'm done with that, I'll come back. Okay, so we got both fees, both feet rekeyed, and he fits very good now. It's actually a little tight, which is okay, but I just filled in the gap down here by the toe and around the side here a little bit. Uh, so these are going to look really good. So now there's, the gaps are minimal on the feet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and I'll just do a little bit of this on camera. We're going to um, work on these wrists a little bit, get these kind of filled in and blended. So we're going to do this one first. It's a little easier, I think. And again, I'm just going to do a little bit of this on camera because it's I got to be able to pick them up and move them around and it's it's tough. So I think for this, I'm going to use my older A's and I use a little bit of lacquer thinner to kind of smooth things out I'm just using my fingers. So let's get some lacquer thinner in the cup. I'm out of the Salva set, but lacquer thinner works well too for smoothing out. And Aves is a two-part epoxy putty. It makes it in equal amounts. Like I said, the older stuff dries a little quicker. That's why I want to use this, just so I'm not having to wait. I can um, hopefully uh, work on this a little bit later today after this had a chance to cure. I think after today, after I get the Aves on their wrists, so I got two balls about the equal amount needed together for a few minutes. And I like to roll it in my hands and then fold it and roll, fold it and roll. I think what I'll do is also, because <clears throat> I know we need a little more filler on this back butt cheek, I may do that with Bondo. Just need to uh, smooth out the shape a little bit. And I can do that while this age is drying. <clears throat> and then once that's done, um, my goal is to be able to get a rounder primer on this guy tomorrow and look at any areas that need more work. Um, let's say Thursday, Friday. So my goal is by end of day tomorrow to have this guy fully prepped and they can start painting. I'm going out of town next week for Thanksgiving, so um, probably won't get done until after Thanksgiving. But this is a cool piece. I mean, it's just massive. He's pretty impressive. All right, so you mix this together until it's the same color. And then I'm going to get a bunch of these uh, sculpting tools. I actually need to buy some more because, again, I'm really bad about cleaning my tools. And these little silicone tips are great, but um, these tools right here, the silicone tips. Let me get this back in the light a little bit. But if you don't clean them off, the stuff dries on them and it's hard to get off. Now, they say let the A sit for five minutes for better workability. I just start working with it. Um, So like when I first, the first few tools, tools I use are these metal tools here. And I use these for packing the A's into the joint. I'm really going to get down in there. Because right now this is epoxy. The key's epoxied, but since there's a gap, only really the bottom half of the, the wrist has got the five minute epoxy on. It's not coming off. If anything, the, the, <clears throat> the hand will break off before that joint breaks. You can see here where I did the thumb. Looks pretty good. Once I get the first round of primer, I'll, that'll give me a sense of where I need to go, baby. Add some more details back in that kind of got sanded out from the filling process. Okay, so that's mixed up pretty good. So I'm just going to get a little bit in my hand and I roll it up. And then I like to use... Um, 
again, I need to clean these tools. I should have enough babes to do both the wrists. So I do use these metal tools to kind of really push it down in there. And I dip them in some thinner. small area at a time. And once I'm satisfied that that's packed in there, much as I can, I move on to the next spot, pack it in there. And then once it's all packed in, then I go through and I really worry about kind of blending the shapes. I won't need as much down here because this the epoxy kind of I let the epoxy ooze out last night and it filled in the gap down there. So I'm just dipping my tool in the thinner over here so it doesn't the stuff doesn't stick to the tools easily. And I come in with the, this end. I can push it in. The reason I pack it in is because um, it makes smoothing out the joint easier if that joint is completely full. It just makes the blending of the putty easier. And it just strengthens the joint too. So first it's not very pretty. I can't see because the venom's head in the way. Sorry. This is why it's hard to record this, especially when it's as big of a piece. It's just hard to get the camera a spot where you can see what I'm doing. But I can see what where I can see what I'm doing. Not pretty at first, but we're gonna go ahead and smooth this out here in a second. And then the second that I take this off as a base and put it in my lap and turn them upside down. So now what I do is I take some lacquer thinner like on my thumb, and come ahead and start smoothing it out. I still, I still sand these joints a little bit because I never get a perfectly smooth transition with the putty, but let's be up where to go. So 
down here there's not much of a gap because the the 30 minute or the five minute epoxy filled it in so i'm just using my thumb to push it in whatever gap there is there Right here, there's a little bit of a step. This side of the arm is higher than this hand, so I'm going to build it up a little bit right here on this side. The great thing about this sculpt is it's pretty loose. And I just kind of created a bump right here. That would be that bone or whatever sticking out. Just like that. So that step is gone. Blend it in nicely. And then while, <clears throat> while this is still a little wet, I can come in here and kind of recreate some of the texture and the skin but I, I, I find it easier to go in there uh, when it's a little harder and then I over sculpt it and then when I sand it down a little bit it seems to work pretty well so So now with this older Aves, this will <clears throat> this will start to harden in the next oh I don't know 30 40 minutes. If it was the newer stuff, it would take much longer. So the newer stuff, you have much like I said, more working time because it's not dried out as bad. I'm gonna do that. Kind of screwed up on the head going on here. I'm just going back in where I see some muscle definition and just kind of recreating that shape here with my thumb like right here and there's a tendon right there so we're gonna push that down in order to recreate that shape right here I'm not sure if you'll be able to see what I'm doing because my thumb's head in the way but yeah, we're going to come in here and all this excess we're going to smooth out. I can use um, some of these sculpting tools a little bit if I can't get in with my thumb. I like using my fingers because I can feel um, how smooth the transition is between the putty and the sculpt. That's why I really use my fingers and a sculpting tool. Uh, I like this concave shape. Looks really good. I 
sure if you guys can see what I'm doing. Hopefully you can. So that's the gist of this. I'm going to continue to do this on both wrists and then uh, we'll be in a holding padding for a little while um, <coughs> until those dry. So uh, the next thing I'll probably record is once I get that all done and it's dried, I'll give this a really good bath and then I'll get a coat of primer on it and we'll see where we got to go from there. Okay, so while the A's on the wrist is drying, I went ahead and put a little thin layer of uh, body fill on this butt cheek to help even it out. And I'm just going to do and sand this down. And then what I'm going to do, once I get primer on this, I'm going to go through and kind of draw some of this, this texture that's on this side onto this side. And then I'll put in, a, I'll rescribe some more of that detail put back. And it won't look exactly the same, but... Um, that way we get some of that texture back in there because it's getting all filled in right now with the body filler. But I had right here where is where the joint was the worst. It was high on this side and high on this side. So that's why I <clears throat> decided to fill this in and reshape it uh, the best I can. And then, um, like I said, until I, get a, until I get a coat of primer on this, I really won't see all the trouble areas. So it's not just, it'll be probably couple rounds of priming and fixing and then priming and fixing. You know, there's never just one round of primer and you're ready to go. Especially on stuff like this. You really need that primer to show all the imperfections. They're hard to see when it's all white. Primer does a great job of showing anything that needs work. So right now I'm just going in here with some 80 grit to get the shape down. And then I'll follow this up with uh, some 240 or some 180 and 240. And then I'll be good enough for primer. This will be doing at least probably two or three rounds of priming and fixing. So maybe I'll get maybe I'll be able to get a coat of primer on today. That'd be really good. We'll see. You can see here, but it's all smooth and it should have some of this wrinkly skin texture in there. Some areas of the sculpt, there isn't any texture at all. So I'm just leaving those alone because that's how the sculpt is. But if it was, it was there before and I took it out, then I'm putting it back in. So yeah, just going to keep saying this and blending it until it's uh, a nice even shape. Okay, so I spent the rest of the afternoon working on the wrists, getting those blended. Um, <clears throat> just kind of going through and checking things. And I just got the first round of primer on there. Uh, I'm going to go back and sand this area a little bit. It's a little, looks a little rough from my kind of trying to re-sculpt it. I'm not a sculptor, so I'm just going to sand this down so it's not so prominent. Soften it up a little bit. Um, but overall, it looks really good. Um, yeah, so first round of primer. Let this dry overnight. And then tomorrow I'll go and check everything again, make sure we're looking good. And then if it is, um, I'll just spot prime the areas that, that I had to do any work on and then we'll paint. So all the joints look really good. I'm real happy with how everything blended. Um, in the crotch, the fingers look good. They look like they've been, they were sculpted on. The wrists look good. The head blends really nicely. So yeah, so everything, uh, all that work with the putty turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I don't think you would, unless you saw this piece in, in pieces, you wouldn't know where it had been cut before. So I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, the only thing that's bugging me right now is this right here. I went to try to sculpt some of this texture in there and I just went a little too deep with the Dremel. So I'm going to sand that down tomorrow. Uh, just soften it up a little bit because it's not so prominent 
on the sculpt itself. I just went a little too deep, I think. So sand it down, soften it a little bit, and by the time I paint it, it'll look good. The weird thing about it is that this one has some muscle sculpted in on this side, and this side didn't. So what I'll do is I'll just, with paint, I'll replicate the muscles with paint, and it'll look like it'll mimic the muscles on this side of the butt cheek. So you can do that with paint. You can kind of mimic the muscles just the way you shade it. And this is just Krylon uh, gray primer out of the rattle can. I wasn't about to try to do this with the airbrush. It's just too damn big. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. So there you go. We call this work in progress done. Um, and then the next one will probably be um, shooting paint. So hopefully that'll be in the next couple days. Um, like I said, I think I need one more day of just kind of going over this thing prep wise and making sure everything's tightened up. I've seen a couple air bubbles that pop are, that are here on the uh, emblem, the Spider-Man emblem, and um, a couple here. And those I didn't see when I was working on it. So those are things like that, that primer, they pop out right away, or air bubbles. Um, I saw, there was a piece of resin sludge somewhere. I may have gotten it out. There's a couple of pieces of resin sludge here and there, and some of the grooves that I want to dig out. But uh, I think, yeah, I think maybe half a day to another day of prep and he will be ready for paint. So uh, that's it for this work in progress. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye.